big black box. Staring at me. I had to have it. I had to have it. No one's fun anymore! Whatever happened to fun? Listening to the Drag Dungeon Podcast with your hosts, Jay and John. Hey! Welcome back to the broadcast, your favorite podcast. You ask for this shit if you're easily offended. We don't recommend it. You ask for this shit, so here it is. You. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. And just like that, Variety, thank you Variety for all the great and just like that content. Variety editor at large, Kate Arthur, sat down with our favorite little elf on a shelf, Michael Patrick King. He looks like that guy from Arthur Arthur and the Invisibles or whatever. Madonna's in that, incidentally, but yes. Little Michael Patrick King, where he reveals the first details about season two of And Just Like That, which are slowly leaking out. They're leaking out. So, Kate asked Mike about you know, the conversation about doing a season two of and just like that. And he's, he kind of plays coy. Like he's like, well, I don't know. First I wanted to figure out, was anybody interested? And (laughs) are there any stories to tell? And then she quickly reminds him it was the highest rated premiere and series on HBO max ever. Now, granted HBO max has only been around a couple years, but still she's like, quit, quit trying to downplay. Like they didn't want a season two. They wanted it. It was not some big conversation. And those actresses and actors were ready to cut, get them checks cashed. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Like, I was thinking, he's like, I talked to Sarah Jessica Parker. I'm like imagining him saying, so, uh, SJP, do you think we should have a second season? And her having her, like, phone down, checking her, like, bank account balance. <laughs> looks up it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she's got construction on that big townhouse. You know, you know she got in trouble, allegedly. Her and... Um, Matthew Broderick, they bought two um, brownstones or townhouses next door to each other, and they weren't supposed to connect them, but you know they did. Oh, God, that's that's so, <laughs> not, to, not to drop the N-word again, but that's so Madonna, like, getting an apartment or whatever and being like, I do what I want. I'm going to, like, paint, yeah. like, you know, I'm parking here. I don't care. I'm, like, spray painting my parking spot so nobody can have this even though I'd I'm love, not supposed to. I love <laughs> that. Does anybody remember that when Madonna got in front of her town? She she just took the yellow spray paint, shook it up, and went out there and was like, no parking. Madonna here. <laughs> right? It was great. The city made her cover it up, but I was like, iconic. <laughs> and if I bought two houses next to each other, you better believe I'm busting walls down. So oh, really? I, I'm yeah. not even mad at her for that, but that's not cheap, so... We need those paychecks. Need those coins. From and just like that. So, uh, Michael says, MPK says he's excited about delving further into the four new characters in the second season, um, which would be Che, Naya, Lisa, and Seema. Um, that's all well and good. I have to say, as a longtime fan of the show, I don't really care that much about the new characters, aside from Seema. I'm more interested in the main bitches. What do you think? No, for sure. Like, I don't really care either. Like, they weren't compelling enough for me to, you know, like, want to know more about them. You know, their their stories weren't, mm, they weren't thought out enough and fleshed out. And like, like, they need to be fleshed out more in in the first season to intreat me. Like, there wasn't enough there. And we know how we all feel about Che. Of course, which we have a lot more coming on Che. Right. Like, Seema, sure. Like, I don't feel like I know enough anything about her. I would like to know more. The rest were just such bit characters. I don't, there wasn't enough. They were bit characters. That's right. It was, they were an amuse bouche, but my bouche was not amused. I couldn't agree more. Touche. Um, <laughs> so, but he does say that he's going to try and integrate the, um, the four new characters more with Carrie, Samantha, and Charlotte. So maybe they'll just get a bigger table at the cafe for brunch, you know, and they'll all be there. And then Che walks in, everybody like, who invited those? You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, with Carrie, Miranda, and Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah, I, 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 he did say, and that's kind of like what we talked about before. Like, 
where they, they referred to Che in that article we talked about before as being part of the friend group. And Che was not part no. of the friend group. So, I mean, I am more interested in seeing how these new characters, you know, if you really bring them in, yes, bring them to the table, the the lunch the lunch table, take them to the picnic. Like, could you imagine Che being at that picnic with Carrie, Miranda, and Like having a dude there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It's like, (laughs) well, to me, to me, it would be, it's like who invited somebody's brought their husband. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, which is so different. You know, Chase is so different. And that's what we're saying before. Like that character would have worked so much better. I think if it would have been more like, like Seema, somebody that Carrie and could relate to. So yes, it's going to be like a wrecking ball coming into their lunch and just like (laughs) smashing through. Oh, I brought some beer. I brought a Like the damn (laughs) Kool-Aid jug. Kool-Aid, what is it? Busting through the wall. Kool-Aid. That's not a joke about anybody's size either. No, it is not. It's it's just the whole like (laughs) bursting through the concrete wall, (laughs) wrecking everything and just fucking it all up. Thank you. I'm kind of excited. I I would like to see that. Somebody please make a gif of of Che busting through a brick wall. (laughs) We'd really like that. (laughs) Like the Kool-Aid me. Okay. Um, Now, what I thought was interesting was uh, Michael Patrick said that he and Sarah Jessica were talking about during the pandemic, during the panty, that they were discussing doing a podcast about sex in the city as opposed to a whole new season. Now, this could be bullshit. I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. They were talking about talking about behind the scenes and because obviously we were all just at home watching reruns during the panty. Um, and I'm, But he said that that idea eventually evolved into, you know, the show. Um, would you have preferred a podcast? No, I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I might have like tried to listen to it, but it, you know, with podcasts, um, knowing how insufferable to... these two are, I don't know. Yes, yes. I, I don't really think I want to hear my, my uh, MPK. I, I don't really want to hear him talk. Like, I didn't even want to hear him talk in this little interview because we didn't learn that much. And he's not going to be totally yeah, I transparent really... with us. So, yeah. His, yeah, his personality is a little. He has, a, he has like a very God, God, God <laughs> complex about the whole thing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, relax, girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so we said at this point, now this interview is from a few weeks ago. So they're about a month into uh, the writer's room. They're writing the new series, which they said will fil- uh, film this fall and air next summer. Um, he said they're doing it over Zoom. Um, I think that's a mistake because personally speaking, or if anybody out there, I know you have been on a Zoom meeting call for work or anything. Everybody just pretty much just agrees because they want it to be over with as soon as possible. Do you agree with that? A Zoom yeah, call? Yeah, right. And and I think like in any sort of creation of art, if you're collaborating, you need to be in the room together. Right. I mean, you feed off of each other. You people's, you know, I always say this, too, like people's energy in the room just affects affects me a lot. And I think it would affect how I create and you see people's honest reaction not through some like flickering you know (laughs) like screen uh, zoom call that has terrible audio or something you know you in the room you feed off of each other you feel each other's energy and collaborate and you can have side conversations with people if you like feel it you know you have all these options like i feel like it's too cold and separate no it's not i'm just realizing the the irony or hypocrisy of us we do this over skype but there's only two of us <laughs> and and we've been doing it for a long time i feel like a writer's room there's multiple people it does need to be in person I well, right i mean yes i mean two people creating this is different than a group of people creating you know um a, a script a story for more people that they're going to yeah. be needing to Too collaborate many with that's yeah it's parts. not the same they're they they need to be in the same room yeah so but i know any kind of zoom call i've been on and people are like proposing the most preposterous ridiculous stupid ideas and i'm like yeah sure cool all right Right. slam the computer yeah Yeah. um okay so he wouldn't really bring he didn't give any teasers but he did say that the new season will start three weeks after the final episode as far as i wonder why three like that's why three why not the next day i don't know 
or a year or whatever like a decade. Uh, maybe because of uh miranda going to la that's so right. maybe they want to wait too far into that maybe i'm just guessing i don't know no, he did say that he said that they will show che and miranda in los angeles he referred to Che as a narcissist comedian too, which I thought was very. Aware. That was interesting. Aware yes, I agree. Yeah, but but also because Carrie kissed that guy, whose name I don't remember from the podcast. Wasn't he like the podcast producer? Yes, I don't remember his name either. So. The totally irrelevant guy. So he's like, I can't wait to see what happened behind that uh, that elevator door. And I'm like, really? Like, you're the know. only one. Yeah, you're the <laughs> only one. <laughs> um. So I hope she like. Uh, gets gets on the on I almost said grinder gets on Tinder and really starts swiping because she was I I was so tired of everybody being so scared of online dating it is 2022 relax everybody's a whore online well the thing is too is is with Carrie as I was thinking about this I'm like okay so she has had this you know amazing relationship with Big and then he died and her heart was broken if they I hope they don't try to play her off as naive again you know, like back in Sex in the City, and, and this was charming and wonderful, and we loved it. That the Carrie was naive and romantic about everything, and and open to having these relationships. You know, with all different kinds of. I just feel like now she's like a, she, she's she's realistically, a big girl. yeah, she's a big girl now. I realistically, she, in in my opinion, should not just suffer fools like she did before. You know, like, that's hard when you get older and you're, like, trying to date again or whatever. And you just don't suffer fools anymore. You're like, next, mm-hmm. I ain't dealing with this idiot. Where back then, she dealt with the idiots. Yes, I would <laughs> like her to be a little harder, a little tougher. Yeah. Smarter. smarter. Smarter, street smart, and just... Which oh, might be boring for us. I don't know. A little less, like, so um, ideological and whimsical. Like, oh, well, yeah. I couldn't help but wonder. Just cut that shit out. It's Your really husband's romantic. dead. Spread your legs. Romantic romance but i mean if you're to the point where you're insufferable like as a, not that she wasn't that but i mean they just can't make her i think when you're creeping up on 60 it's time to fly you know what i mean like let's, just, let's go <laughs> um let's see so um kate from variety says what were your reactions to the che character che diaz and i feel that michael patrick was being delusional and kind of lying here he says uh, well, people, when Che first came on, people loved Che. They thought, oh, she's so, uh, again, we're respecting pronouns. A hero. A hero. A hero. Of the first said. season. Everybody loved her. And then he said, but I warned the Cause writers. Because Che handed a handkerchief to somebody at the funeral. How heroic. I didn't even remember that. I don't fucking remember that either, because <laughs> who cares? Che was a hero, and everybody loved, loved Che. And I'm like, okay. And then he talks about how Che represents, this is a quote, the current moment of gender and sexuality, and also Che creates anarchy. Mm-hmm. What the fuck does that mean? Um, now, Michael Patrick talks about how Miranda was always kind of a rebel on the show, and how she like reluctantly got married in a park, and how she's so unconventional. And I'm like, yeah, but also Miranda was in love with Steve. Um, if you guys remember, she was... She and Steve had broken up. They were dating separate people. They were both in relationships. And it was Brady's, like, one-year-old birthday party or something. And they... Miranda had been holding back the fact that she loved Steve. Mm -hmm. And they went into the laundry room to, like, light the candles on the cake. And she's like, I love you, Steve. I can't help it. And he, like, looked at her and he's like, you've always been the one. It was a very sweet moment. But they were both... Like, she was... She pursued Steve. And I know this was, like, 20 years ago. But still, he's acting like Miranda's always been kind of blasé about love. And I'm like, no, she really did love Steve. She wanted to get married in that park because she thought it was romantic and sweet and, yes, unconventional. Yes, I don't like that he discounted that either. Like, I I, I don't like that because I believe their relationship was real and she really did love Steve. Now, I get the idea where Miranda was not, well, she was a romantic, a reluctant romantic, maybe. Like, she... I feel like I'm just throwing this out there. Compared Maybe to Carrie, she, for sure. Yeah, she kind of was sort of fought that whole mushy, you know. She was the anti Charlotte, actually. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she just was, you know, a reluctant romantic and she let herself go. And, you know, when she let herself go, it was kind of a beautiful thing, like with Steve. But sure, but I don't think she was. He made it sound like she was like some sort of like. Um, 
pants wearing, like refused to wear <laughs> a dress. You know what I mean? He made it sound like that, and I don't, I don't feel that she was that. I, maybe her character went through something, which I'm thinking back through all the episodes um, of if she talked about this, or I might be making this up. Maybe she went through some bad stuff in the past with relationships, or her parents had bad relationships. I don't remember, so forgive me. I'm just trying to think of her background, like maybe that put her into a place where she didn't want to be romantic and she was sort of cynical about it but she wasn't like not in love with steve and so i don't really understand what he's talking about i don't either he, he's trying to justify it and i really was not for well that's what che he was trying to justify che i mean that's what that was is trying to make something out of nothing saying <laughs> anarchist rebel like you know i really that is a big pet peeve i hate when people talk to the audience or about the audience like we're idiots i really do hate that yeah. it's like we'll go along with you gaslighting. i'm still trying to figure out what gaslighting is that gaslighting <laughs> so let's see <laughs> <laughs> like you're crazy you're crazy that's not what this is actually it is what it is bad writing um okay i thought this was interesting when they talked about filming big's funeral and um he was shocked that everybody kept the secret that Big died. I can't remember. Did we know before the first episode that he, I don't feel think we did know. He said they had like 150 extras, and he sent half of them home. They did things like they had Chris Noth come like walk into the scene so the paparazzi would get him, not realizing it's his own funeral. They put Carrie in a different color dress. I remember that. I remember seeing that shot when he said that about the polka dots. I think I remember seeing that. But I don't, I didn't yeah, register the with me like, oh, who died? Like, I don't think I thought that. I was just. Yeah. And then he gave some speech to the extras, like, please don't spoil this. And shockingly, nobody did. I don't remember hearing that he di had died. No, of course, great. Then, that was before they all turned on him. Um, for those allegations. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, he also brought up that when um, Kate asked him what some of his favorite moments were from Sex in the City, the original series. And he mentioned um, when Miranda's mother died. And this was one of my favorites, too. And she was walking down the aisle and she was all pressed because she didn't have, you know, her, her sisters had husbands to walk with her down the aisle for the funeral thing. And so Miranda was walking by herself and she was breaking down. And then Carrie, like, jumped out of the seat and, like, held her hand and walked with her. And I thought that was so sweet. But then I got to thinking, where is that Carrie now? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Because... <laughs> That was so selfless, so loving and caring. And I'm like, I know her husband just died, but now it seems like everybody's running to Carrie's side every five minutes. But where is she giving a shit about anybody else? Right. I hope that this second season explores that more. Because I agree. This was very... I mean, yeah, Carrie's... You know, Big just died and Carrie needs support. But there was definitely a lot of... of um, which we kind of talked about that before. Like, everybody, you know stroking carrie and just and she's just like giving back nothing take 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 that's all she did. well she's got a whole new season to turn it around we're looking forward to it so they're filming in the fall and we won't get to see it for a year but think about all the good spoilers we're gonna have in the meantime and it seems like every couple weeks some and just like crap news comes up kim control can't stop talking sarah jessica just came out recently talking about don't call me brave for my gray hair <laughs> We go in depth about that and many other issues on our Patreon. If you're not a member, it's three bucks a month. We have a back catalog of 40 plus episodes, hour long podcasts where we talk about hot topics and current events and sex in the city gossip. Patreon.com slash drag dungeon. And also we would like to thank manscaped.com for sponsoring this and many other of our episodes. Use our coupon code drag 20. You get 20% off and free shipping they got the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. You can go fully bald. You can trim. You can do whatever you want. They got great boxers, lotions, potions, all kinds of great stuff at manscaped.com. Use the code DRAG20. And thank you for much, so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hey, welcome back to the broadcast, your favorite podcast.